Hey, what's up guys? Josiah Novak with The True Transformation back again today. And we've been getting a lot of questions about how to warm up, also how to stretch, how to do mobility. So I thought I would take you through my process when it comes to getting ready for my workout. So everything from how I warm up, how I utilize mobility, some mobility movements that you can start adding into your routine, and then talk about some stretching and how to basically get ready for your workout, prevent injuries, and then as you go through the rest of this year, how to incorporate more mobility and stretching into your routine. So the first thing we're doing, as you can see here, is I'm doing some cardio. Um, it's a little bit cold outside, so I'm also wearing really warm clothes, got a hoodie, got sweatpants on. And that's one of the first things I wanted to teach you is that when we're trying to get ready to work out or we're doing any kind of stretching or mobility, we want to warm up the body. We want to get our body temperature up, especially in this colder weather. So I'm doing some light movement, treadmill walking. I could do the step mill if I wanted to, elliptical. It doesn't really matter. You just want to get your body temperature up. And I'm utilizing warm clothes to help facilitate that process, make it faster. So that's step number one. We're going to warm up the body. We're going to get the body temperature up. And then we're gonna move into some dynamic mobility movements, just to get the body moving, get the joints lubricated, start to get our body in a really good spot to train. And that's where I'll teach you some mobility uh, movements that you can start adding into not only your workout routine, but your day-to-day -day routine. So let's jump into it. Now that we're warmed up, we're gonna jump into some foam rolling uh, before we get into the actual dynamic movements. Uh, I love foam rolling at this point in the workout. Not a big fan of really doing a ton of foam rolling where you're spending more than just a few minutes. I like to just do 20 seconds on each major body part. Just start to work through anything that's tight, anything that's sore, feeling any hot spots. Go through your whole body, make sure you handle the back, hamstrings, glutes, quads, calves. 20 seconds on each thing is more than enough. Once we get through the foam rolling, then we're gonna jump into some dynamic movements. Today we're starting out with the world's greatest stretch. That's the first movement. You're stretching everything out here, your groin, your glutes, your hips, and then you're also getting some thoracic rotation for your spine and your upper back and your shoulders. So take your time here, four or five reps per side is plenty. Once we're done with the world's greatest stretch, we're moving into the squat to reach. So here we're opening up the hips, stretching out the glutes again, and we're getting some upper body activation as we stretch out. Grab the toes, bring your chest as high as you can. And then on the way up, we're stretching out the hamstrings, which a nice hamstring stretch, slow and controlled to the top. Once again, five, six reps here is plenty. Then we're moving into walkouts. A little bit more of a dynamic movement here, starting to get the body temperature up even more. Working our core, working our shoulders, working our chest, and working our hips a little bit more. Hips are one of the tightest things on the body because we sit so much, so you'll notice I have a lot of hip and glute work in this warm-up. Once we're done with the walkout, then we move into the 90-90 glute stretch. This is one of my favorite movements. You can do this one all the time to really activate the glutes. You're gonna to wanna to raise that back heel up and hold it for four to five seconds on each side. Three reps on each side total is plenty.
Once we're done there, we're moving back into hip and glute activation. This one's called the three-way prone hip liftoff. It's a long one, but this one is amazing. You got three different angles that you're bringing that heel off the ground. A little bit above 90 degrees, right at 90 degrees, and then below 90 degrees with your heel and your ankle touching the back of your opposite knee. You can see here I go both sides. Once again, going through the whole thing once on each side is plenty, five to six reps on each angle. Once we're done there, we're moving into the sideline thoracic rotations. Uh, once again, we're opening up the upper back, opening up the core, opening up the shoulders. This one works your upper body tremendously. So take your time on this one. Feel those shoulders open up, feel the chest open up. This one will save you from future shoulder injuries if you do this one often enough. Two more, last, second to last one is the pancake walk. This is where we're just walking our hands out flat, stretching those hamstrings. As you can see, this one I'm actually not great at. I need a little bit more work on my hamstring flexibility and my lower back flexibility, but do this one often enough and you'll see an improvement. Take your time here, no rushing, no need to rush through this one as you don't wanna pull the hamstring. Take it nice and slow and steady, five, six reps is, is fine. Last but not least is our seated wall angles, or some people call them seated wall slides. This is where we're once again working up, opening up that chest, keeping those shoulders back, keep your back of your forearms against the wall at all times. If you can't go up past a certain point without your hands coming off the wall, stop there and just work on that angle, work on that flexibility until you can go a little bit higher. This one's great once again for protecting the shoulder, protecting the upper body, and getting the upper body ready to work. All right, so now that we're done with the dynamic movements, we're gonna move into our central nervous system activation. So today I'm doing chest activation because it's an upper body press day. So we wanna get our chest, shoulders, and triceps fired up to be able to handle heavier loads as we go into the actual weight training part of the workout. I like to do this one right before we jump into the weights because it gets your central nervous system activated, which is gonna help you be stronger, move more weight, and also just prime you uh, to prevent injury, making sure your body's ready for the workload that's ahead. Um, here we're just doing a medicine ball explosive floor press. So here we're going for explosive reps, fast, powerful, five to 10 is plenty here, two sets max, and you're ready to jump into the workout. All right, so there you have it. That is my pre-workout warm-up routine. Uh, if you wanna add anything to the end of the workout, all you can really do is run through those stretches again, and this time, just hold them for longer periods of time. So once you feel that muscle stretch out, then hold that for 10, 30 seconds. You can even do foam rolling at the end too. However, if you take care of your warm up, you're gonna see much less injury, much less tweaking, things don't hurt as much, and your recovery is gonna be a lot better. Plus, 
you're gonna be a lot stronger and more efficient during your workout. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them below in the comments. If you wanna see more of these, if you want me to put more to workout stuff together or prehab stuff, or even just more about stretching and mobility, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, be sure to check out the website, thetruetransformation.com. We have digital programs that can help put together your whole entire workout and nutrition plan for the new year. In the meantime, hit the little bell to get notified every time we release a video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. Talk to you on the next one. Peace.